So, unless you've been living under a rock, or you don't have access to Netflix and iPlayer, you will be well aware of the global phenomenon that is RuPaul's Drag Race. There have been 13 series in the US, 2 in the UK, and it's even reached down under, who are misses, with the current series of Antipodean Queens fighting for the RP crown. Now everyone has their favourite queen, and part of the fun of the series is following their journey from the first time they walk into the workroom until they sashay away, or snatch the title of next drag superstar. One of the all-time favourite queens is from Series 5 and All-Star Series 2, contestant Alicia, who has brought herself from Mesquite, Texas to the Vaudeville Theatre in London's West End to present her one-woman show, Alicia, Memoirs of a Queen. Small confession from me at this point. I watched the first two series of Drag Race, then nothing until Series 1 of the UK version, at which point I rediscovered the show and have been hooked ever since. So my knowledge of Alicia was practically non-existent before the invite came through. However, talking to a real drag race aficionado, I was soon put right. He told me Alicia Edwards, Justin Johnson, is a worldwide fan favourite, and then went on to extol her claims to be drag royalty. Intrigued? I went along to see if his analysis of her fame was accurate. The curtain rose, then after a video montage, the video music started, and four very attractive young men, Austin Fowl, Luke Bella, Alex Brown and Billy Sawyer danced furiously. And then there she was. Elisa came on stage, looked out beyond the footlights, popped her tongue and the audience went absolutely crazy. So what is the attraction? First, she is stunning to look at. According to a drag sister of mine, no queen wears a dress for more than 20 minutes. And Elisa obviously believes in that maxim, but she changed clothes a lot, both off and on stage. And the clothes were gorgeous. Very much in the style that we know and love from our drag queens. For those old enough, think Danny LaRue in her heyday. There was also the hair, which I can sum up in two words. Big, beautiful. One wig, which was a particular favourite of mine, was silver and covered in sequins that reflected every light and gave Lisa an almost halo-like glow, glow around her. Not surprisingly, the makeup was flawless and the total package an absolute visual delight. But Alicia is so much more than just a gorgeous mannequin. She has personality and really knows how to connect with an audience. At the end of every Drag, drag Race episode, Rue signs off with, If you don't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? Alicia definitely loves herself. She happily admits that, but not in an arrogant way. She is personable and likeable. Over the course of the show, she told us about her past, including her very touching coming out story, and gave us her an insight into her life as a diva with a capital D. She also lip-synced and danced her way through some fabulous songs and, while well, the stage is not that big, Alicia and the boys really performed some awesome choreography. For me, the second act, which really concentrated on the drag race years, was harder to follow, not being totally up on my DR history, but she was still engaging and kept me chuckling along. Those that were fully in the know were really in their element and occasionally shouted encouragement or comments. Alicia handled these good-natured heckles with aplomb and, unlike many drag queens, talked back without resorting to putting people down. The performance felt very natural and I'm guessing that she went off script many times as she went through her stories. This was not a problem as I could have sat and listened to her Texan accent for hours. The final number came all too soon and, while in my opinion was not as spectacular as I was hoping for, was a great way to round off a wonderful trip getting to know Alicia and finally understanding why her seat on the Drag Race throne is assured for a good many years to come. I gave the show a four-star review for London Theatre One and there's a link below.